training, event management, and advertising, all with a combined annual turnover of 30 million US dollars. But few people know that when he was only 12, Adam was expelled from school for misbehavior. He was academically weak and was always the slowest in class. He also had poor social skills, indifferent, and labeled as a problem student. But what transfer a misfit, an underachiever, to a millionaire just at the age of 26? You will get the answers from Adam in our Talk Vietnam show today. Welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam. We're very lucky today in our Talk Vietnam to have our guest Adam Koo here in the studio. And I'm sure we're all very curious to learn more about his secret to success. Hello, Adam. Thank Hello. you very much for joining us. Thank How you are you? I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling excited to be here. Yes, wonderful. Now, as I said, one of the most curious thing everyone is probably wondering, how is it that you were able to have, you know, a million, you know, be a millionaire basically uh, by the time you were 26? It didn't happen by luck or by chance. It's something that I really planned for and I really worked very hard towards. So when I was 15 years old, I read a book that really inspired me a lot. And the book was called Unlimited Power. And the book was about someone who's a janitor who had no education and he became a millionaire at 24 years old. Wow. Right? Anthony Robbins, this guy, right? Yes. So I read that book and I was like so inspired. I said, if this guy can do it at 24, you know, I'm going to do it at 26. <laughs> and I gave myself two more extra years because in Singapore, you have to go to the army for two years. Ah, right? uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and one of the things that I, I learned in that book is this. If it's possible for someone, it's possible for you. It's only a question of strategy. Yes. So if I said, if someone can do it, why can't I? There must be a way to do it. All right. So at 15, I started a little business, uh, which was a mobile disco company. Uh, what I did was, in school, a lot of my friends wanted to go to the discos, but it was too expensive, and yes. they couldn't get in, right? So I created my own disco uh, in my grandmother's house. <laughs> Initially, I hired a mobile disco company to play the music, and I paid them about $300 a night. Yes. But I'll sell tickets to my friends for $5. $5 each. Each to come for this disco party. Exactly. And we had so many people coming from my schools, from other schools. We had up to two to 300 people. Wow. So you start making kind of the profit, yeah. the initial profit. So that was profits. like $2,000 a night. Wow. I paid a mobile disco company $300. I still made $1,700 uh, a day for a weekend. And you were like 16? 15 years old. 15, yeah. yes. So I did it every weekend and slowly I built about six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. And with that, I bought my own set of mobile disco equipment. And I started going out there and I conducted parties for people, charging three to $400. And that's how I started making money. Later, at about 18 years old, I started trading in the stock markets. Yes. So I took all my money, I didn't spend, I saved everything, and started investing in the stock markets. And initially, I lost money like most people. God, you know what I was doing, right? And then I started to get mentors to teach me how to really make money. Mm. And in a way, I was very lucky because uh, during that time, there was this big stock market boom, the dot-com boom in the US. Yes. And I bought the, you know, the stocks like the Yahoo's and all those things. And I made eight to 10 times my money. Wow. And uh, in a way, I, I knew, I, was, I learned a strategy of how to get out before the crash. Mm. So that, that's how I actually made my first million. And I invested in my first property in Singapore at about 21 years old. 21 years old yeah, already. So, yeah, you like, know, so by 26, I, I did it, yeah. Well, let's go back a little bit to, to you know, your starting point. You mentioned that first book by Anthony Robbins that give you, gave you like this that, idea that yeah. if, if he can do it, I can yeah. do it too. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Yeah. Um, how, how is school life uh, other than that? I mean, as, as I know, you, you weren't that great in school. No, uh, when I was really young, I was an underachiever. And I was no good in studying. I was no good in maths. I was no good in Chinese. And I, I found it very difficult to pay attention. So for my major exam, I did very badly. And I was rejected from all six high schools oh. that I, I picked. We were all given six choices. I couldn't get into one of them. Yes. So in the end, the government sent me to a school which I didn't choose. And it was uh, ranked number three in Singapore from mm. the bottom. Oh. <laughs> it was the bottom school, right? <laughs> and so when you go to a so-called school that's not very good, you mix around with, again, the bad friends. So yes. I mixed around with the gangsters, the oh, hooligans, and I, I got worse. You know, How right? did, you know, I'm curious because I, I know that that book um, was, was a, a turning point, but, but was there any other, tur other turning point where, yeah, you know, you felt like you, you were kind of taking yourself literally out of the gutter 
and, and pushing yourself towards this new goal. Yeah, you see, what really changed my life was I went for a motivational program at 13 years old. Uh, it was called Super Teen. <laughs> it was run by a Malaysian guy. And at that time, my father was on the brink of giving up. He said, I don't know what to do with you. You're hopeless. I, I don't know what to do, right? So my father heard that there was this camp that changes people's attitudes, that motivates them to study, to teach them how to study. So when I went for this motivational camp, my, my teacher told me, say, Adam, if you want to change your life, you've got to change your mindset. Yes. And through the program, I learned how to change my mindset. Mm. And I learned a very powerful technique known as NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, yes. which is how do you reprogram your mind. Yes, and Anthony Robbins is yes, also... Yes, and, and it was through the program that. that I learned about that book. Hmm. Right, and I started learning all these techniques, super memory, speed reading, mind mapping. So I got really excited and said, my God, I didn't know all these things existed. Yes. So after the camp, I went back to school and I started applying all these techniques. And from the bottom, I became the top in my class. Wow. When I started to do very well in school, my friends came up to me and said, what happened to you? <laughs> How come you're scoring A's? You're failing all the time, right? And one day my teacher came to class. She said, Adam, I've got a one hour lesson, but you know what? I want you to teach my lesson for me. <laughs> and she said, I want you to teach your friends how you are able to memorize everything. So I went in from the class and I taught my friends all the memory techniques. Yes. Right? And they were like, wow. And when my friends started to do well, I felt so great. Yeah. You know, and I realized that this was my calling and like my purpose was to help people. From his success and achievements, Adam set up Adam Cool Learning Technologies Group and seven other private companies. Over the last 15 years, he has trained over 350,000 students, teachers, professionals, executives, and business owners to tap their personal power and achieve excellence in various fields of endeavor. His success story is regularly featured in regional media like The Straits Times, The Business Times, The New Paper, Lian Zhaobao, China News Asia, China U, China 8, News Radio 938, The Hindu, The Malaysian Sun, and many more. In 2008, Adam was awarded the NUS Business School Eminent Alumni Award for being one of Singapore's most successful and prominent business leaders. Can you, can you kind of elaborate on the learning method? I mean, for you know, students out there, for, for even professionals working every day, these mm. learning methods, um, it's always necessary, whether you're a student, whether you're a professional. Yeah. So can you elaborate on this uh, learning you see, method? A lot of people, they, they find they can't learn effectively. They can't memorize, they can't read effectively. So one of the things I learned is that when a student doesn't do well in learning, it's not because they're stupid or slow is because their strategy is not effective. Yeah. And I'll give you an example, right? So we all have a brain, and we've got what we call a left brain and a right brain. Our left brain takes care of logic, analysis, language. Right brain is imagination, creativity, creativity emotions. Okay? Now, the school system teaches in a very left brain way, very logical, yes. very mechanical. So people who are very left brain students, they will learn very well. Yes. So one of the most powerful things I learned is that we have to learn the left brain subject using the right brain. Yes. Using both sides of the brain at the same time. So I started to study using mind maps, colors, pictures, and I love drawing. So suddenly, I started to draw history. I drew geography and it all went in. Yes. Right? To memorize, instead of reading something again and again, I will create cartoons in my mind. I will create imagination. I will associate it. I remember so fast. Exactly. And learning became fun. When learning becomes fun, it becomes easy. You know, you're, you're, you know, you have... 15 years of coaching under your belt, or around yeah. 350,000 um, people, both students, professionals, um, businessmen, learning your courses. Yeah. Um, in those years, are there any stories that kind of stick out? People who, you know, your learning method have, have helped them in a way that really stuck to you? I mean, there are so many. If you actually go to my blog, I have put down a lot of the emails they've sent to me over the years. Yes. And some of them are very, very, very heartwarming emails, right? I've, I've worked with so many students where their, their parents gave up on them. Their parents called them stupid. Uh, I even had some students who uh, wanted to commit suicide because hmm. they said, I, I'm hopeless. All right? They were at the bottom of their school. I have students who joined gangs. Um, and, and after the program, their life changed so much that suddenly they wanted to study. You know, I even had cases where a kid hated their parents, refused to talk to the parents because their parents forced him to study. Yeah. 
And after the program, he hugged the parents and said, I love you, thank you for scolding me. And that, that, that felt amazing. Right? So I, I work with those kind of students. So I don't just focus on teaching them how to study. I focus in teaching them how to care for others, yes. how to respect their parents, how to love themselves, exactly. how to regain their confidence. Exactly. And of course, I also work with a lot of adults. I have a case of this woman who was very successful, a uh, businesswoman. Uh, but at 35 years old, she had a stroke. Mm. And she went into a coma for 21 days. And when she woke up, half her body was paralyzed. She lost her memory, right? And she couldn't recognize her husband or her children because of the stroke. And she went into depression. And she felt like giving up. She ate and became overweight. And she came to my uh, NLP program. Uh, and during the program, she regained her confidence and yes. believed that I can recover. And from someone who people said that she can never recover, she has recovered fully from her stroke. Yes. You know, I've helped people who have gone bankrupt in their business and helped them to rebuild the business through their strategies. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it, it's been a wonderful privilege for me to be able to help people on their journey. Yes, exactly. yeah. Now coming to Vietnam this time, Adam has conducted a workshop in order to share his secrets of success to many of his Vietnamese fans here in the country. We'll have a look at that in the following. <laughs> As a successful investor, Adam's exceptional approach to investing in the stock market attracts hundreds of people every time he comes here to deliver a speech. Of the 600 participants in today's conference, there are directors of listed companies, stock exchange traders, and young people who hope to get richer by benefiting from the expertise of Adam Koo. One day, the price will come down. And you say it's cheap, now it's very cheap. And then it goes up. Then you say, ah, buy. Then when you buy, poof, I go. <laughs> and then you say, it can't go lower, it's really so cheap. It's sure to go up. And then it goes up. You say, ah, buy. Pa, I go. You say, how, how can it go so low? It doesn't make sense, it can't go lower. And it goes up again. Buy. Adam then shared his investment strategy on how he accurately predicted the stock market to profit from the crisis in 2009. He repeated this feat in December 2011 and tripled his portfolio by spotting the right opportunity and buying up several undervalued stocks. He did this despite analysts' warnings and made himself and his students millions. Above all, he has changed the way most of the attendees think of doing business. Trước kia khi mình nghĩ về mua chứng khoán và chơi chứng khoán thì mình nghĩ giống như là một kênh bạc chứ không phải là một kênh đầu tư nào cả. Nhưng qua buổi học hôm nay em thấy rằng chứng khoán là một kênh đầu tư phải dựa vào sự kiến thức, dựa vào sự phân tích kỹ thuật để mà qua đó kết hợp lại tạo ra một cho mình một cái lợi nhuận có thể kiếm mang lời cho mình từ chứng khoán. Đây gọi là đầu tư vào tri thức. In the conference with the amateur and experienced investors of the Hanoi Stock Exchange. Adam shares how anyone can achieve consistent profits from the stock market, despite the economy's current rules, given the right investment strategy and practice. The Vietnam stock market is still very new, right? Uh, it's less than 10 years. Yeah? So as a result, there are not so many companies yet, so you will not have as much uh, liquidity as compared to the other markets that have been around for 20, 30 years. Uh, having said that, it's also a great opportunity. Right? Because the Vietnamese population is growing so fast. At the same time, there's also inflation. Right? So these are things that will tell you that in the long term, the Vietnamese stock market will definitely do very, very well. And right now, because uh, Vietnam has been in a recession for the last six years, the stock market has come down. So if people know how to pick the good companies right, when the recession is over, because recession will always end and the good times will always come back, the economy will grow again. So those who now, they dare to invest and they know how to pick the good companies, when the economy grows again, they'll be very, very uh, wealthy because they would have bought the companies at a very cheap price. Cái cách một người nước ngoài nhìn vào thị trường Việt Nam, lấy những ví dụ thực tế trên thế giới, cũng như tại Việt Nam ấy, thì cho chúng ta nhìn thấy cái nhìn toàn cảnh của, của họ. Cái thứ hai là bằng cái phương pháp thực tế, thì họ đưa ra những lời khuyên nhất định 
theo cái chiến lược của họ và mình tin rằng là để tìm hiểu thì còn mất rất nhiều thời gian tuy nhiên thì cái phương pháp đấy là đáng quan tâm và nếu như chúng ta tìm hiểu sâu hơn nữa thì chắc sẽ là một cái một trong những cái kênh để giúp chúng ta tăng cái nguồn vốn cũng như cái 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 thu nhập của mình tăng thêm theo thời gian. Now tell us how many times have you come to Vietnam? More than 20 times I reckon I did not really count. <laughs> What keeps you coming back you think? People. You know, uh, every time on Facebook I I make a post I say I'm going to Vietnam, I get thousands. In fact, the last time I had 5000 likes. <laughs> okay. You remember the likes? <laughs> yeah, more than 5000 likes and I think I had almost a thousand comments and we said we love you, please come. <laughs> So that keeps me coming back, right? It's, it's, it's nice to go to a place where you're loved, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, how, how has you know, the experience working here in Vietnam, have it, how has it differed from other countries that you've been to? I mean, you've been to so many countries coaching and um, teaching your courses. I think what, what is really unique about the people here is that they are very hardworking. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I believe that with what they learn, they're going to go extremely far. Of course, the main challenge I face here is the language. Yes. That, that's the main challenge, right? Because mm -hmm. the other countries I go to, uh, like Malaysia and Indonesia, I just speak English. But here, when I do a course, it has to be translated all the time. So that's the only challenge I face. Yes. Right? But uh, the people's hard work and motivation make up for that. Exactly. I, I know that, you know, the, the, you have taught many courses here, here in Hanoi. Uh, but for the audiences here who have come today, do you mind mm. demonstrating um, one of your techniques or maybe you can teach them one of the patterns? Okay, sure. I'll, I'll show you guys a demonstration of how your mind can change your potential. All right. So everyone, please stand up for a while. And first thing is I need you to spread out a bit. All right. Spread out, spread out. Yeah. Now, guys, you have to put your two arms this way. Put your two arms this way and you must be able to turn without hitting anyone. Spread, spread, spread. Yeah. Now, before we start, I want you to warm up. So I need to, I need to uh, warm up this way. Okay, yeah, make sure you loosen your muscles. Okay. Uh, okay. So ready? Your feet remain still. Your feet is stuck to the floor. Put your right finger in front. Right finger. Okay. When I say go, turn to your right to the maximum point. Ready? Go. Turn to your right. To your right, all the way to the maximum. Remember the place and come back. Okay, remember the place and come back. Okay, come back, come back, come back. Okay. <laughs> okay, stay still, stay still. Your, your feet remain still, right? Close your eyes. And now in your mind, imagine pointing your finger forwards. Okay, just imagine. And imagine turning all the way to the maximum point. But this time, imagine that you can go further. You go further and further and further and further. One feet, two feet, three feet further. And imagine that, that you're able to point to a new goal that is much further away. Right? Now, open your eyes. Point your finger again. When I count one, two, three, turn as far as you can. Ready? One, two, three, go. Turn one more time. And see, do you go further? Yeah? So how many of you went further? How many of you went a lot further? Okay, wonderful. So how come you could go further? Did, well, did it have to do with your body? Right? No, it's the same body, right? The same potential. Did you change your body? No, same body. In fact, I asked you to stretch. But the difference was the second time you have a goal. See, in life, when you have a goal, you can go much further than where you go if you have got no goal. When you got a goal, it unleashes your potential, increases your potential, right? So there are two things to learn. The first thing is, you do not know how far you can go in life until you dare to imagine it. Before you can reach your goal, you must first see it in your mind. If you want to become a millionaire, you have to first imagine that you are a millionaire. See yourself as a millionaire, and then you can become a millionaire. See yourself as a great student, scoring great results. Imagine and then you will score great results. It begins in the mind, everything. Okay? So that is the power of your mind. All right? Thank you very much. Yes, please give Adam a applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam, for that wonderful demonstration. It really comes to show that if you don't set your mind to it, you probably won't ever reach that full potential. Absolutely. In 
2011, Adam Ku conducted his first ever training course here in Vietnam on business strategies. And it was held by a, a company called Money Rain, and whose founder is heavily influenced by the philosophies of Adam Ku. We'll have a look in the following. The Money Rain project was a brainchild of Nguyen Quoc Chung, a young Vietnamese entrepreneur. Its development strategy is to share and multiply the philosophy of making money rain through inviting world-top millionaires, businessmen and speakers to Vietnam and share their views on making money rain. This project was founded thanks to the expertise Chung learned from Adam Ku. Khi mình nghĩ đến đến điều đó thật nhiều thì xác suất mình gặp điều đó càng nhiều. Và từ đấy sau khi uh, nói chuyện với Adam Ku mình bắt đầu nghĩ đến các uh, những người khác, các chuyên gia hàng đầu thế giới Thậm chí mình đã từng nghĩ là mình có thể có một dịp là nói chuyện với Richard Branson, chủ tịch của Virgin Airlines, hoặc là mình có, có dịp là, uh, làm việc với các chuyên gia khác. Và điều đó thực sự đã trở thành sự thật khi mà ban đầu chỉ là làm việc với Adam Khu, sau đó chính Adam Khu và những đối tác của ông ấy đã giới thiệu cho mình với những diễn giả khác, vì thực ra họ có một cái cộng đồng mạng lưới các diễn giả. Và điều đó giúp cho mình hiện giờ có đã có thêm được rất nhiều các cái diễn giả để mời Việt Nam để giao lưu với doanh nhân Việt Nam. Since the very first Vietnamese conference with Adam Khu in 2011, 40 to 50 Vietnamese people have successfully applied Anmaku's know-how into their own businesses and found good results. That resonates throughout the community, and so far, the Money Rain project has had the cumulative participation of more than 1,000 people in these high-ranking workshops. In our studio of Talk Vietnam today, we're very lucky to have Nguyen Kuk Chung, who is the founder of Money Rain. He's also the person who helped to bring Adam Ku to Vietnam the first time in January 2nd of 2011, four years ago, to start coaching. Em cảm ơn anh đã dành thời gian đến chương trình. Anh có thể chia sẻ thêm là hồi đầu thì cách đây 4 năm anh đã biết đến anh Adam Ku như thế nào ạ? Thực ra thì cách đây 4 năm, tôi mới làm sinh viên, mới ra trường, thì tôi sinh năm 87. Tại thời điểm đó thì uh, uh, tôi muốn mở một hoạt động kinh doanh đó là mời các doanh nước ngoài về Việt Nam vì tôi quan điểm như này uh, nếu đã học thì phải học của người giỏi nhất giống như bây giờ tôi mà uh, muốn học đá bóng ấy mà tôi có khả năng tôi có dịp được học của Beckham chẳng David Beckham thì khả năng tôi uh, trở nên giỏi hơn đá bóng thì sẽ xác suất thành công cao rất là nhiều thì tôi nghĩ rằng là nếu như để học kinh doanh thì học của người giỏi nhất thế giới và tại thời điểm đó cái chủ đề đầu tiên mà chúng tôi muốn Mandarin triển khai tại Việt Nam đó là chủ đề khởi nghiệp và lúc đó tại điểm đó tôi search trên internet rất là nhiều về việc là ai là diễn giả mà hoặc là một chuyên gia có thể tư vấn được về vấn đề là khởi nghiệp cho các doanh nhân trẻ và tôi tìm được thấy rất nhiều tên nhưng trong số đó Adam Ku là một người mà thỏa mãn một tiêu chí rất đặc biệt đó là đó là một người châu Á có khả năng truyền được cái phương pháp của Adam cho người khác vì có thể rất nhiều người họ sự khởi thành công nhưng mà um, bảo họ chia sẻ với cả những người khác rất là khó chỉ Adam là một cái kỹ năng để chia sẻ thì tôi lấy ra sao mà tôi chọn Adam bởi vì tôi nghĩ rằng là làm người đã thực sự thành công nhưng đồng thời là người châu Á thì điều đó khi những cái việc mà công thức hoặc những cái phương pháp ông chia sẻ có khả năng áp dụng cho các bạn Việt Nam sẽ cao hơn rất là nhiều. Dạ. Bản thân anh cũng là một người đã khởi khởi nghiệp cách đây 4 năm với Money yeah. Rain thì anh cảm thấy rằng là anh thu nhận được gì anh học được gì từ Adam Ku? À, tôi học được hai điều mà đến bây giờ tôi vẫn thường xuyên đó là hai điều gần như tôi tâm đắc nhất khi mà lần tiên tôi gặp với Adam Ku đó là À, bản thân những người rất thành công như Adam Khu Họ vẫn liên tục tiếp tục học và nghiên cứu điều mới Mà đó là điều mà tôi thực sự tôi cảm thấy rất rất tâm đắc Khi mà tôi à, à, chia sẻ với các mọi người Bởi vì là à, rất nhiều người họ họ bảo là tôi đã đạt đến mỗi thành công nhất định Tôi đã trở thành một chủ doanh nghiệp Ví dụ thế, hoặc là tôi đã trở, đã có một à, khoản thu nhập khá tốt Để được hàng tháng tôi không còn gì phải lo về này tài chính nữa Và họ ngừng học, họ ngừng phát triển Đã và điều đó làm cho họ rất khó trở thành một triệu phú hoặc tỷ phú được. Trong khi bản thân người như Adam hiện giờ ông ấy là người rất thành công trong chứng khoán, trong đầu tư, trong làm diễn giả các thứ. Nhưng bản thân Adam liên tục phát triển, liên tục học hỏi điều mới. Đó là điều tôi thấy rất là tuyệt vời. Điều thứ hai mà tôi học được từ Adam và những diễn giả khác đó là tôi nhận ra một điều rằng là những người thành công ấy, cái cách họ nghĩ nó thực sự là có một vài điểm giống nhau và mình có thể như kiểu chiết xuất ra được một chút và để mình có thể học được một vài điểm đó và nếu như mình học được điểm đó mình áp dụng nó vào trong cuộc sống của mình giống như Adam vừa nói về việc gọi là visualization tức là gọi là hình dung hóa đấy chính là một cách mà những người thành công họ đều có khả năng hình dung hóa về sự thành công họ rất là tốt và nếu áp dụng theo điều đó thì khả, khả năng thành công của mình cao rất là nhiều và nó vui một chút là 
à, khi tôi là một sinh viên tôi cũng thường xuyên nghĩ đến trong đầu mình là tôi sẽ chụp ảnh về Nam Khu, tôi sẽ chụp ảnh về Nam Khu, tôi sẽ chụp ảnh về Nam Khu. Và bây giờ thì thực ra tôi có rất nhiều ảnh về Nam Khu. <cười> À, anh Trung ạ, anh suy nghĩ như thế nào về về cái câu nói rằng là uh, chúng ta không chỉ nên đưa uh, cho cái thế hệ trẻ những con cá mà cần phải đưa cho họ cần câu dạy cho họ cách cái câu cá. Đúng rồi. Uh, tôi nghĩ rằng cái câu đó bản thân câu đó thì rất là đúng nhưng mà câu đó quá thiếu bởi vì uh, tôi nghĩ rằng là đương, đương nhiên là cần câu là quan trọng rồi nhưng mà cái quan trọng hơn đó là biết chỗ nào có cá. Tức là bạn biết là bạn kinh doanh ở đâu? Bạn biết là bạn nên kinh doanh cái gì, kinh doanh với ai Đấy là chỗ nào có cá Còn tôi nghĩ rằng nếu các bạn chỉ có cần câu Không biết chỗ nào có cá Thì các bạn chỉ có một cái gậy thôi Chỉ đến giảm một cái gậy thôi Thì tôi nghĩ rằng là rất nhiều bạn bảo là khởi nghiệp ấy, Là đợi mẹ cho cho tiền vốn này Rồi đợi bố mẹ giới thiệu cho mối hệ này Và rất nhiều cái hoặc là đợi thế đấy trước Cho cần câu, các bạn gọi là cho cần câu Tôi nghĩ là bây giờ các bạn cứ cố gắng tìm ra được chỗ nào là kinh doanh tốt lĩnh vực nào kinh doanh hay À, bạn à, thành lập đội nhóm thành lập team làm việc nhau chẳng nhé đối với tôi khi tôi gặp an nam khu tôi biết à chỗ này là chỗ có cá việc đưa các chuyên nước ngoài về việt nam chia sẻ các à, bạn trẻ việt nam đấy chính là đấy chính là mặt cái rằng của tôi chỗ nào có cá và thực sự đến cho đến hiện giờ à, trong 4 năm chúng tôi đã huy động gần 10 tỷ đồng tiền vốn và trong số đó chưa số trong 10 tỷ đó không có tí nào là tiền của tôi cả như vậy quan trọng là chỗ nào có cá chứ không phải là cái cần câu đây cần câu sau đó rất quan trọng nhưng đối với người làm khởi nghiệp ấy, thì biết được nên tin rằng cái gì quan trọng hơn rất là nhiều. So Adam, uh, uh, what do you think of, of this process? You you had your first kind of business idea. Uh, let's go back to the mobile, uh, the mobile dis disco, disco yeah. when yeah. you were 13, 14. Um, <coughs> when when do you think it's it's a good time for for you know youths here in Vietnam to to basically start dreaming big? You see, to to, to start a successful business, there are two things you need to have, and you have to do uh, something which you're passionate about. So I didn't start the mobile disco business because I said I can make money in that. No, because I love music. Yeah. So, you know, and that's why I did it. So again, when you love something, you find that you've got a competitive advantage compared to other people. You're not in it for the money only. You're doing it because you love doing it. Yes. And if, again, look at people who build successful businesses like Steve Jobs, Oprah Winfrey. When they first started, they did it because they love doing it. Now, the second thing is you can't create something and say, okay, who wants to buy this? You have to find people who already want to buy this, an existing market, existing demand, and you feel the demand. So on one hand, I love music. On the other hand, I saw many of my friends wanted to go to discos, but they couldn't go because it's too expensive. They couldn't, they were too young. Yeah. So you match the two. Exactly. All right? So, In the words of Chung, you found the fish. That's right. Yeah. So number one, you've got to know where the fish are. Uh, and you got to love that particular type of fish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So if, if one doesn't work, it doesn't work. So you know, you, you can't just have the fish. You have to have a pole. Yeah. You have to have the techniques and how to fish. You have to yeah. know where the fish are and you last of all you need to love the fish. You gotta yeah. love fishing. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I gotta love fishing. <laughs> love fishing. Come on, thank you so much for coming to the show and thank you for your success. who is the author to 13 best-selling books and we'll have a look at his amazing works in the following. Adam Koo is also the best-selling author of 13 books, which includes I am gifted, so are you, how to multiply your child's intelligence and clueless in starting a business. His book, Master Your Mind, Design Your Destiny, which was the second highest-selling book in Singapore in 2004, was on the bestseller list for 36 consecutive weeks. His next two books, Secrets of a Self-Made Millionaire and Secrets of Millionaire's Investors, both listed and stayed on the number one spot on the Swiss Time bestsellers list for more than 52 weeks. In all the books, Adam conveys a message to the youngsters. Pursue your dreams, follow your heart, make the very most of your life, and eventually leave behind the world in a much, much better place than when you found it. If at least one life has breathed a little easier, because you have lived. That is what it means to have succeeded. Let's talk a little bit about um, your books. I mean, you've written um, 13 books in all. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these? What, what, which one would be your kind of favorite? Well, I love all of them, right? <laughs> and, and people ask me, how do you decide what books to write? You know, I basically write books 
during a time when that is something I'm very passionate about. Mm. So of course the first book I wrote was, I'm gifted, so are you. And I wrote that when I was still a student because I was so passionate about it, to share my story, how from a lousy student, I was one of the top students in the university. Yes. And I said, I want to tell that story. And that's why I wrote, I'm gifted, so are you. Okay? So after I graduated as, as a student, I went into business, I went into my career. And I found different challenges. Now you've got career challenges, relationship challenges, right? And I said, how do I deal with this? So I started using all these NLP techniques to motivate myself, to change my mindset, and to overcome my business, relationship, career challenges. And I wanted to share that. Yes. And so I wrote the second book, which is Master Your Mind, Design Your Destiny, yes. which is on NLP. Because that was the thing that I was going through at the time. And so after I did well as a student, I started to do in my career. I said, okay, um, I want to start creating wealth. So that's when I started you know, building my businesses, stock market and all those things. And people came up and they asked me, how do you invest? How do you build a business? And mm -hmm. so I started reading and writing all these investment books. Investment books, yes, right? exactly. And then later I had, I had children. So now I've got two daughters. Yes. So I wrote a book on parenting. Oh, yes. Okay. So it's just basically the, the inspiration the of the moment. The face of my life. The yes. face of my life. The and, face of your life. Um, one of the recent books I wrote is called Winning the Game of Life. Yes. And that's more on philosophy. Uh, the philosophy of how to live your life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. How to have gratitude. You know, how to love yourself and love others. Okay, so that's a different phase of my life right now. You know, what would you say to someone who, you know, said to you, you're, you're very lucky to be talented and to be successful and to be rich. Um, do you think luck plays any part in it? Actually, in a way, I always like to joke, when people say that I'm talented, I get a bit offended, right? And, and the reason I get offended is this, is because behind every talent I have, speaking, writing, trading, it was hours and hours and hours of hard work mm. that people did not see. Yes. So I, I work really hard, okay? When my friends, um, you know, in their 20s, right, they go out a lot, right? They go mm -hmm. partying, discos, all right? They go and watch TV, movies. I was at home, you know, uh, working so hard, right? Yes. And I believe that uh, talent doesn't happen like that. Mm. Talent happens through hours of hard work. So today I can stand on stage, I can speak for two days non-stop without any notes. Yes, I've got talent in speaking. That's because I spent more than 10,000 hours speaking in the past. Yes. And initially when I spoke, I didn't have confidence. I was stuttering, you know, I, I was nervous, I forgot what I said. Mm. And every time before the speech, I would rehearse my notes for hours and hours and hours. And it was only after many years that I got good. When I started, investing in the stock market, for the first two years, I lost all my money, you know? Yes. And many people, when they lose their money, they give up. They mm. say it's gambling. I didn't give up. I said, I'll make the money back. And that motivated me even more. So I spent so many hours reading books, going for seminars, mm. researching companies, and, and today I can make money in the markets because I lost so much money in the past. Yes. So people never see the hard work and the, the failures that mm. goes before success. But to succeed in anything, you have to fail many, many, many times first. Yes. So do it as early as possible. <laughs> yeah. yes. Adam is known for giving great advices to companies in times of economic difficulties. And here in Vietnam, that is no exception. We'll have a look in the following at how he's helping Vietnamese companies in this time of the country integrating more into the world. The world is changing quickly. In the old days, companies had to compete with local teams and local companies. Now they have to compete with global ones and the global marketplace. If they do not invest in helping their employees innovate and change faster than the economy, then they are going to be left behind. According to Adam Ku, the key here is to empower the employees with the right mindset and give them the right strategies in order to be able to outmaneuver the competition. He causes personal effectiveness. Personal effectiveness, or I call it personal mastery, is a person's ability to bring out the best in themselves. They must be very focused on their goals, able to motivate themselves to follow through. They must have the confidence to be able to communicate effectively. And all companies, all individuals go through setbacks. They go through um, failures. But when you have got the personal effectiveness, you can bounce back from the setbacks and become even stronger as a result. So many people, they have got good credentials. They've got master's degrees. They've got degrees from top universities. 
But if they don't have the personal mastery to bring out the best in themselves, they will not have the competitive edge against the competitors. So to me, that's even more important. Most participants in Adam Koo's workshop for personal effectiveness are high-ranking managers of companies and organizations in Singapore and several Asian countries, including Vietnam. Adam Koo engages them in some carefully crafted games and activities to show how they can make their fortune and, most importantly, how they can achieve the same results given the right guidance and tools. Trong khóa học người ta khai thác rất là nhiều những cái điểm về cảm xúc của con người Chẳng hạn như một nhân viên nào đấy trong nhóm của mình Bạn ấy có một cái giá trị về gọi là được nhận biết về những công việc bạn làm hay những giá trị về gia đình Thì dựa trên đó người lãnh đạo của nhóm có thể đưa ra những cái động viên đối với nhân viên Hay là đưa ra những cái khích lệ hay những cái quan tâm thăm hỏi về gia đình Đấy chính là những cái cảm xúc giúp cho cái người nhân viên đó làm việc tốt hơn trong nhóm của mình For an experienced headhunter like Dao Kheng Chi The most practical thing she gets from the course is that she can perform better interviews to match talents with employers and career opportunities with professionals. Trước đây khi mà mình có gặp tư vấn hoặc là phòng vận ứng viên ý, thì thường là mình sẽ bám rất là sát vào kỹ năng và kinh nghiệm của người ứng viên đó và thường thì nó sẽ rất là mất nhiều thời gian. Thế nhưng gần đây thì mình đã có đan xem một chút về chuyện phân tích và về giá trị của họ, về điểm mạnh, điểm yếu của họ. Và từ đó thì mình rút ra được rất nhiều những cái nhận xét cũng như là những cái đánh giá nó kỹ hơn về người ứng viên đó và bản thân cái người ứng viên đó người ta cũng cảm thấy rất là vui khi mà được chia sẻ. To date, Aramco has trained 350 organizations in sales, team building, leadership, and NLP training across Singapore and other Asian countries. This has helped them learn the best practice and the strategies used by the top organizations to bring out the best in the staff. Um, talking about you know businesses, you you've had had you know um, 12 years of experience in corporate training, um, and we'll go back now to the story of these few years, uh, the whole world, um, and particularly here in Vietnam, also um, kind of having to deal with recession and and the the, the effects the negative effects of the crisis, economic mm. crisis. Um, what advice would you have, um, and I know you mentioned this before, but if you can elaborate on the advice that you would have for, for businessmen out there who are getting a little bit anxious and not sure if they're, they're going to be able to make it. So all businesses in any country will always go through good times and bad times. And in good times, everyone makes money. It's easy, right? But it's in the bad times that only the good companies will make it and the lousy ones will not make it. So how do you become a great company? How do you make sure that your company continues to, to grow? Uh, the big challenge people face is innovation. Yes. Okay? So as a business, if the way you do business is the same as everyone else, you're not going to last very long. Mm. Because you always compete on price, and in the end, you're going to lose money. But if you can keep innovating the way you do marketing, you innovate your product, innovate your service, innovate your brand, that's how you get ahead. So the first thing is the leadership has to think innovation. Yes, right? renewing yourself. Yeah, constantly. to change the company, the leader has to change. Either you change the leader or the leader changes the mindset. Hmm. Okay? The second thing or the challenge they face is how do you keep your staff motivated? Yes, talent in, retention. Yeah, because in a recession, people lose their motivation. You have to cut their pay, right? to retrench people. right? So again, it goes back to the company must have a good leadership to be able to keep motivating the staff build up the morale so yes. people feel that we're in it together and we'll fight hard to build up the business. In terms of uh, the training, um, you know, you've, you've spent 12 to 15 years of training and coaching people. Um, do you think you, you have been in a learning process as well? Have you kind of built this um, method for yourself in order to train people better? Of course, absolutely. So, in fact, every time when I conduct a course and I, I'm teaching the CEOs and the directors, I'm learning as well. And after the course, not only do they get better, I get better. Yes. Because in every course, we've got different company CEOs with different problems. And sometimes they come up with a problem that I've never seen before. And they say, Adam, how do I solve this? And I go, hmm, okay, I've never seen it before, right? And during the course, I think about it and we strategize and we come up with a solution. And so what happens is I learn a new way of doing it as well, right? And you can imagine when I do corporate training, I work with people from different industries, from yes. advertising to food and beverage to hotels and all mm -hmm. that. 
and I start to learn their business. Yes. Right? And, and yeah, so I, I can only get better as well. Great. Well, you know, we, we mentioned earlier that this, this advice for um, business leaders to, to motivate their, their crew and to motivate their staff. So how do you uh, motivate your staff? Okay, first of all, I always believe that you have to hire people who are smarter than you. Okay? Because a lot of CEOs have this ego. Right? I hire people who are not as smart as me. So I talk, they listen, they don't question. No. You can't do that. If you do that, see, I believe as a CEO, CEO, if you're the smartest person, your business can't grow because your business only depends on you. And the moment you die, your business dies. Hmm. I believe as a good CEO, you hire people who are better than you yes. at what they're good at. All right? So I hire people. My, so my accountant is better at finance than me. Hmm. My marketing is better than, in marketing. marketing than me. They're all better than me. Right? So I believe that when you hire people who are great at what they do, they are they are normally already motivated a lot. Yes. Now, once you find the best place, you've got to train them. So you've got to uh, invest a lot of time training them, training them, training them. So I train a lot of my own staff myself. I train them personally, right? And of course, you've got to reward them. Yeah? Now, rewards is not just about money. Some people, you can give them a lot of money, they still don't feel motivated, motivated right? So what motivates the most people, people the most, is recognition. Yes. You've got to recognize them, you've got to love them, you got to say, good job, you know, and you've got to be their friend. And they must feel that the company is a family, mm. right? Because people spend more time in the office than at home now. Yes, right? that's true. So you've got to make sure the office is like a family. And, and that's why they want to keep coming back to the family. And, yeah. and you build a great culture. Yes, and right? a good culture. A as culture well. of, you know, uh, helping each other. There's no blaming, there's no excuses, yes. there's no politics. Yes, yeah. and going to work is fun. Yeah, it's fun, it's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, what would you say uh, in, in terms of, you know, going back now to, to when you were 15, 14 or 15, your dream was to become a millionaire. Uh, businessman. A businessman, a successful businessman yeah. from, from that book uh, reading, you know, um, Anthony Robbins. What, what is your dream now? What is your goal? What is that point that you're trying to reach to? Um, it's, it's very interesting. Right now, it's not about making more money. It's not about building my business. It's just about impacting as many lives as possible before I die. Because I don't know when I'm going to die, right? You know? So I want to make sure, because I always say that when I die, it's not what I take from the world. Because I can't take anything, right? It's what I leave behind. It is how many people I touch and make a difference to that is the legacy of my life. Yes, this legacy. Yeah, so that, 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 that's my ultimate goal. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Adam, for joining us here on Talk Vietnam and sharing your stories, sharing, um, you know, this, this method of learning, this method of thinking and keeping mm. your mindset at a more positive pace. Thank, thank you Thank you for much. having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been fun. Please thank give you. him a round of applause. And that wraps up our edition of Talk Vietnam, this time with Adam Gu. We hope that his words have helped you to basically be more motivated and basically maybe change your mindset a little bit and reach that goal that you have been, um, maybe it's hidden somewhere in the back of your mind. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you more next time here on Talk Vietnam. Goodbye for now.